If you have your Bibles, we're going to be in uh, the epistle of 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3. <clears throat> and I want us to, I, w- I want you to think about something uh, just for a second and kind of dwell on uh, a question I'm going to ask. And, and that's, who is the first person or was the first person to invest in you and, <clears throat> and disciple you? and to teach you uh, the things of the faith. Even if it was some, uh, someone very uh, passing in your life, it was a passing experience, um, or someone that spent a lot of time with you, investing in you to teach you the faith, whether it was to bring you to the faith and teach you, or you were already brought to the faith and uh, they helped you grow. Something that I think it's very important for us to reflect back on um, because I'm sure uh, Paul did that with his life as well as uh, teaching Timothy to do the same. <clears throat> as I think about my uh, heritage, if you will, to uh, coming to faith, um, I think about the person that impacted me uh, as, as far as um, really being the first person to disciple me. And I, I, I never really thought that until Sierra asked me. She, was, she asked me one time, who was the first person to really uh, invest in your uh, Christian walk? And I thought about it. It didn't take me too long to respond. I said it was my grandfather, who was, you know, my pastor for the first 13 years of my life. And uh, I came to faith when I was about 10. So uh, those three years were, even though it was very quick uh, before he passed away, um, very much an impact on my life. Uh, me just hanging on to every word of all of his sermons that he would preach and just um, just also just spending time with him, fishing with him, thinking as a kid, oh, I'm just fishing with my grandfather, but he's investing in me and t- teaching me things. And one of the greatest gifts that I've ever received... <clears throat> It's from my grandmother. Um, not too many years, uh, not too many years ago, uh, before I came here to seminary, she gave me not all of them, but many of my grandfather's uh, sermon outlines, and I I read them from time to time and and look at them, and I like always how he would date them. He dated dated all of them. Said you know put the date, the church that he was pastoring, um, and so I, there are many from that I see from the 70s all the way back to the early 60s, and he'll put on there, you know, so-and-so came up for baptism or what. And so I was, scroll- I was looking through several of them, and I saw one that sh- had my dad's name came up uh, for baptism, and so I gave it to him. But <clears throat> it reminds me of, of that passage in Hebrews that says, you know, being dead, he yet still speaks. And, and it's not so much my grandfather that's still speaking, it's the Word of God that's still speaking because it's alive and it's active. But there have been many times that even after he has passed that I've read something like this, an outline, and it has helped me grow. You never know the impact that you're having on someone. And that's what I want us to see in this text. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, a lot of times we, we focus on verses 16 and 17 as well we should, but I just want to spend a few moments on verses 14 and 15 tonight. I won't uh, keep you long. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14, Paul starts off by saying, uh, telling Timothy, you, to Timothy, however, continue in the things you have learned and become convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them. So I want to stop right there real quick and, and see what he says. He says, you, however, so there's a contrast happening. What's happening leading up to these verses? Well, at the beginning of chapter 3, Paul tells Timothy, you're going to experience some difficult times. Uh, he, he says, in the last days, difficult times will come, and he explains what these difficult times are. People will be uh, lovers of themselves. They're not going to be lovers of the truth. They're not going to seek the truth. They don't want the truth. They just want to have their ears tickled, hear what they want to hear. And uh, going on from that, going on and on about what uh, is going on in the world, how uh, they'll be hostile to the faith. And he is um, basically 
preparing him for that, saying this is what's going to happen. And the same obviously applies today. We see that happening in our culture. But he's, after he goes into all of that explanation, he says in verse 15, or 14, you though, you, however, don't need to do this. You need to continue. That word continue, it, it obviously means to keep on keeping on, if you will, keep on doing what you're doing. So he's doing something, whatever it is he is doing, Paul is telling him to keep doing it. What does he tell him to continue? He says, continue in the things you have learned. Continue in these things that you have learned. What things has he learned? He's learned the faith from Paul. He's learned the faith, not just from Paul, even before Paul, from his mother and grandmother. Paul refers that actually earlier in this epistle, that he was brought up in the faith because of his mother and his grandmother, the power of uh, a godly mother and grandmother. And he says, continue in these things in the faith, the things that I've taught you about being faithful uh, to the Lord. Uh, He says in verse eight of the first chapter, therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel according to the power of God. He's telling him, don't be ashamed of what these people in, uh, in chapter 3 are ashamed of, the first part of chapter 3, that they're not going to pursue this truth. Don't be ashamed in that. In fact, embrace it. Embrace what this truth is that you were brought up in, what you were taught, what you have learned. And not only what you have learned, but you've become convinced of. You're convinced of this. I think many people... Um, that that are uh, against the Christian faith and try and argue against the faith. They try and say that Christians just have a blind faith. They just walk blindly and just walk into the abyss saying, ah, you know, there's a God and I'll, I'll trust him. But that's really not what the Christian faith is. It's a ventured trust. We have testimony through the word of God. We have testimony in our own lives, in the lives of others, that we can see a faithfulness of God to where it's not this blind leap into the dark. It's this trust and this expectation of what God says in his word, he will perform. And he's telling that to Paul as well. He said, continue in the things that you have learned and that you're convinced of. You're you're firmly persuaded in what you have learned, what you have been taught. So I have to ask you, as I had to ask myself, are you convinced? Are you thoroughly, uh, firmly persuaded in this faith? There are going to be times we doubt. I mean, that, that's natural. There, there are going to be times that we, that we question even sometimes, God, where are you? What are you doing? What are you up to? But are we thoroughly convinced that what God says is true and will we continue in it? in spite of how we feel. And so that's what he's encouraging Paul to do. He says, continue in these things that you have learned and become convinced of knowing from whom you have learned them. Kind of going back to what I said, he's learned it from Paul and his uh, mother and grandmother. So he's telling him to reflect back. And as I asked you to reflect back and think on who impacted you first in the faith, whether it was a relative, a friend, even a stranger, a pastor, whoever it might be, have you started doing that for someone else? Is this something that you have moved on to someone else to to become uh, a disciple, a discipler to uh, teaching them? As we move on in the text, he says in verse 15, says, and that from a child and that from childhood, you have known the sacred writings, which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Timothy was clearly a wise young man. Uh, you can read that in the text that in First and Second Timothy, what Paul writes to Timothy, that he was a wise young man, a good leader. He might have been more timid than Paul. You can kind of tell that in his writings. But in spite of all that, he was a faithful man of God. And I think the reason was because he was properly trained from childhood. Now, it doesn't mean that if you weren't brought to faith uh, as a child that you're not going to be wise and that, you know, you can't uh, be someone like Timothy. That's not obviously not what the text is saying. But the fact that he was brought up 
in the faith as a child did help him. And it wasn't that he was just brought up in the faith as a child. He lived it. He lived it out. And because of this, as a young man, he is faithful to God, to his work, and that um, he's known the sacred writings, as Paul says. And what are these sacred writings? It's the Old Testament. And he goes on to say the famous passage in 16 and 17, that all scripture is inspired by God. It's breathed out by God. This Old Testament that you were brought up in as a child, um, you're living it out. And I'm encouraging you to continue in this. I think something that stood out to me as well in studying this, um, when he says that from childhood you have known this, this, the word of God, is so deep. I mean, you, you, you can plunge the depths of God's word and never even come close to hitting the bottom. But yet it's so simple that a child can understand it. That's why we have, what, Sunday school for kids, because they can understand it. That's why we teach our kids the things of God. Why? Because God can reveal himself to a small child, just like he did to Timothy, just like he did to me, just like he did to many of you. And that's the beauty of God's word. It, it can be revealed to us even at a young age, but we spend our whole lives learning from it, gleaning from it, growing from it. And that's what Paul is telling and encouraging Timothy to do. I want to close with this challenge. As we have read these two verses, as I said, I just wanted to focus on these two that lead up to where Paul says all scripture is inspired by God. <clears throat> If, you're, if you are a believer, if you have trusted Christ, at one point in your life, at one point in time in your life, you were Timothy. You're in Timothy's shoes. You had someone, hopefully, well, you did have someone bring you to the faith, and then hopefully you had someone train you up in some form or fashion, and it might not have been the same person, you know, through years. It might have been many people. That's how it's been in my life. And maybe that's where you are at this point. Maybe you are a young believer and you have that person in your life, but we're not called to stay there. We're not called to stay in the position that Timothy was. I guarantee you at some point in Timothy's life, Timothy became uh, what Paul was to him, to other people. He discipled others. He pastored others. He served others and taught them the things that Paul taught him. So think about who impacted your life and who's impacting it today? Because I, I still have many people that impact my life today. And many of them are here in this church. And think how you can impact someone's life in the future. And as I think about this, maybe one day my grandson will stand up and hold my outline and say, you know what? I learned something from my old grandpa. So let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time that we have together to open your word, to read it, and to grow from it. Lord, we thank you for the gift of uh, discipleship, of, of learning the faith from those who have faithfully lived it for years, and that we can do the same and then teach others to do the same. And as Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, I pray that we'll be able to say the same thing to others, that we will live our lives in such a way that we can tell others in a humble way, follow me because I'm following you and I, my life points to you. As we continue in this prayer service, I just ask that uh, we will seek your face, seek your will, and follow it. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.